Hello friends and welcome to EduperiaWorld.com, your destination to online education. Friends, as from the past few sessions, we are discussing about the gradation of physical properties, in which we have already discussed about the physical state, luster, malleability and ductility in our past review sessions. So today we shall discuss about the concept of hardness and also the gradation or the variation of hardness with respect to groups and periods in the periodic table. So friends, what is hardness? Hardness has variety of meaning. Well, to the metal industry, it may be thought as a resistance to the permanent deformation. To the metallurgist, it means the resistance to penetration. To lubrication engineer, it means the resistance to wear or to design engineer, it measure or flow of stress. To mineralogist, it means the resistance to scratching. So, first let's see these two different images. If I ask you which one you feel is the harder, obviously you'll tell me the big stone. Why? Because for us or for any layman, the hardened hardness or the hard material is which which makes us more endure. So keeping all these definitions in mind, I generalize the definition of hardness as the hardness is a measure of how resistant solid matter is to various kinds of permanent shape change when a compressive force is applied. It is generally due to the intermolecular bonds. Well friends, the hardness depends largely on the packing of atoms in material and the strength of intermolecular or the interatomic bonds. So, the hardness of the element depends upon the grain size, where smaller the grain size, less will be the void and so hardness will be more. Bond strength. Greater the intermolecular forces, harder will be the material. Bond length. Larger will be the bond length, there will be more void space in the material, so it will be the lesser hard comparative to the other. So for example, if I tell you if a material is formed or a substance is formed by the ionic bond, then there will be the force between the unlike charges, which will be the much stronger than the bond formed between the covalent or the sharing of bonds that is the substance which is formed by the ionic will be the much harder or stronger than to the bonds of covalent that is the material formed by the covalent bonds which will be much weaker Hence, it will be less harder than the material formed by the ionic bonds. All the physical properties which depend upon the hardness are the ductility, elastic stiffness, plasticity, strain and stress and lastly the viscosity. These all other physical properties depend on the hardness and the vice versa. They give a minor or major correlation between the hardness to form a material whether it is a much harder or it will be able to have a good ductile, will be have a much elastic stiffness or less or have the good plasticity to form into another shapes can give a good 
strength or have a proper viscosity will actually depend upon the hardness of the material. Friends, we have hardness which is indicated in a variety of ways. These indicated by the names of the tests which are follows. First is static indentation test. It is a ball or cone or pyramid is forced into the surface of the metal or non-metal being tested and the relationship between the load to the area or the depth of indentation is measured of hardness such as Brennell, Noob, Rockwell or Wick. Wicker's hardness test follows in this category. Second is rebound test. In this test, an object of standard mass or dimension is bounced from the surface of workpiece to being tested and the height of rebound is the measure of hardness. The scleroscope and the leap test are the examples. Third is very important and very common test is a scratch file test. Here the idea is that one material is capable of scratching the another. The mode or the file hardness test are the very common example of this type. So these are some very basic tests which we follow to find the hardness of the substance. We have the Rockwell test, scratch test, ball impact test, rebound test, ball Brennell test we call it. We also have the pendulum recoil test. Now friends let's discuss about the hardness of element. We know that we categorize the elements into two forms that is metals and non-metals. So metals are generally hard that is for example, iron, cobalt and nickel. There are also few some exceptions to it that like sodium and potassium which are actually soft and they can be cut with a help of knife. So basically the metals can be tested that is the, the measuring of the hardness can be tested by many means. As a hardness test by far the most valuable and more widely used mechanical test for evaluating the property of metals as well as certain other materials. The hardness of the material usually is considered resistance to permanent indentation and the indenter is pressed into the surface of the metal to be tested under a specific load for a definite time interval and the measure is made of the size or depth of the indent. As a principal purpose of this hardness test is to determine the suitability of a material for a given application. So friends, when we talk about the non-metals, they are usually not hard. As we can say the solids are hard and brittle. They are also soft. For example, coal, sulfur, phosphorus are soft. Well, diamond is an exception to this as it is the hardest substance we know. Friends, to follow the discussion and to know the hardness, we have certain scales. Like this is our periodic table. We have the Wicker's hardness scale which we have already discussed in the static indentation test. Well, Hardness is not really a property but rather an artificial method to use a comparative study of the material to each other. So if a material or for example we can say that with weaker scale is used a diamond indenter in the shape of right pyramid which is then pressed into the test material for 10 to 15 seconds and reported as Wicker's hardness number and the value can also be reported as HV which is a hardness and X you can say a force 
which is used so this is a periodic table and you can see the hardest scale for of the wickers there are some elements which have been flashed with the blue and one with the red which can you give a proper indentation that some material are very soft and some are very hard secondly when we talk about the other test that is a scratch test we always talk about the Morse hardness test which is actually like if material A can scratch material B then A must be harder than B or if material C can scratch A then on this particular hardness scale B falls between A and C the Morse scale is a system that compares the scratch resistance of materials compared to each other so this is the periodic table in which we have some different colors with respect to the Morse hardness scale we actually rate the Morse hardness scale from 1 to 10 where we scale the talc, gypsum, calcite, fluorite, apatite orthoclast, quartz, topaz, corundum and diamond be on the topest of the hardness in the Morse hardness scale. So taking an example of diamond at, as we know that it is the most hard, hard or hardest material or substance in the world we know as the diamond is a giant covalent structure made from the carbon atom that is the composition is only carbon atom where each carbon atom forms four covalent bonds in a very rigid tetrahedral structure as a carbon atom in a diamond are in a crystallite formation and they are packed in so closely and dense that the subatomic bond is incredibly strong so the diamond is said to be very very hard you can see here the comparative study of diamond and graphite as both of these are the derivatives of carbon here we can say the graphite is very soft in nature that is the hardness more scale of the graphite is very less as compared to the diamond both have the carbon in them but the very basic difference is the structure, the crystalline structure, the intermolecular forces between the both the materials or the derivative of the carbon. So the structure is basically the very factor which makes the diamond very hard, very rigid in the structure then to the graphite. So friends, let's conclude the session. Well, hardness is relative term when we talk about the materials that is both metals and non-metals so we conclude here some points that metals are generally hard in nature non-metals when solid are hard and brittle a combination of different substances can produce hardest alloy where alloy is a combination of elements and can make the hardness of metal even more higher side Factors for considering the hardness might include melting point, which is usually points to the higher hardness, scratch resistance, density, tensile strength, yield strength, and a higher value on different hardness scales. For example, we'll talk about the steel alloy, where a steel is very common alloy and is combined with other metals and elements to produce different properties where carbon is a primary hardening ingredient for the steel and is used to increase its hardness and tensile strength where chromium is added to increase corrosion oxidation resistance as well as hardening and higher temperature strength where boron nickel molybdenum niobium and titanium can all add strengthening and hardening property to steel alloy as we said that the combination of these different substances can produce an hardest of alloy now let's come to the diamond as we have already discussed about the diamond the structure of diamond why it is so hard now we have 
this conclusion that the diamonds is the hardest substance which is actually known to us. Let's talk about the tungsten carbide which is actually four times harder than titanium. Tungsten carbide is again a compound and titanium is an element, natural element where tungsten carbide is made of 85% approximately from tungsten carbide, 9.5% nickel, 1.8% of tetalum, 2% of titanium and 1% of niobium. You can say 0.3% of chromium also. So this tungsten carbide measures between 8 to 9 on the Mohr scale, that is a hardness scale. And the ring form is actually said to be the most scratch resistance in the world, which actually does not deform and is the only metal that can be permanently polished, as the tungsten carbide is four times harder than titanium. Reference, titanium is considered to be extremely hard natural element and can have, have tensile properties between 35,000 to 1 lakh PSI, where titanium hardness is comparable to some heat treated alloys. For example, iodide titanium has a Vickers value of 90 VHN. Unalloyed titanium is about 160 VHN and heated treated titanium can reach 250 to 500 VHN. The uranium is also used for the hardening of the substance. Where friends, although not as hard as titanium and metal alloy and is very useful for its hardness and density. Basically, uranium can be made into alloy with titanium and molybdenum to use as armor piercing projectiles and they have the mass and physical properties that allow them to penetrate armor better and at longer distance. When tungsten rounds hit a target, they can blunt, meaning some of the energy is wasted and deform the round. So the uranium self-sharpening property gives on the higher side. By this, we again conclude that the variation of this hardness is actually generally measured by the Mohr scale and Wicker scale in the metal industry. So I end up with my session. I hope you have understood the session properly. So the next session, we shall discuss about the conduction of metals and non-metals. Thank you friends, thank you for watching Edupedia World Videos.